new segment tonight with one of our favorite guests, Congressman Steve Scalise. All right, Congressman. We're tentatively calling this the news whip with a minority whip. It's really cheesy, but we're going to go with it, okay? <laughs> Let's now, try it out. Yeah, let's why not? Now, I want to begin with this. The president hosting a number of Democrats at the White House today for negotiations on infrastructure. Here was just some of the reaction from both parties. You want to spend money, I want to spend money, you want to build bridges, I want to spend bridges. How do you feel about that as a Democrat? The ball is now in his court. Will he be able to deliver? Well, in the past, he often hasn't. There's work we need to do on our roads and our bridges. The committee has been working on that in a bipartisan way. We're very excited about the conversation that we had with the president. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs. Oh, yeah, they were all, uh, you know, smiley, and they were so happy coming out of that meeting. So, uh, you know, why was Nancy so giddy? Well, I guess... Republicans and Democrats are going to blow $2 trillion on infrastructure? Yeah, and, and Laura, the real question is, how do you pay for it? Yeah. And, of course, if you're Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, it's taxes, taxes, taxes. And that's where they're going to want to go. It's got to be paid for and without new taxes. And that's where I think it probably breaks down. Look at Nancy now. That was today. Look at her smiles versus during the immigration meeting. She was biting her lip on the, on the right. Look how happy. This is a tale of two Nancys. What's going on here? I mean... What, is Trump doing the charm offensive? But he, I guess they started at $1 trillion. He's like, oh, let's just do $2 trillion. What is that? I think That's a time, lot of money. We are $22 trillion in debt, Congressman. There can be uh, no deficit spending and no new taxes. And, uh, again, that's where I think it breaks down. I think she's smiling just because she got to get away from the Capitol and all of the socialists and AOC and Omar and Tlaib uh, that have just bogged her down in this mire of, uh, you know, the anti-Semitism, socialism. Okay. The, the Boston Marathon bomber voting, Laura, that's where they that's are the right now. That's the new morality. The the, Joe said he's going to be the morality that's police. Morality. Well, make America moral again. Again, that's Joe yeah. Biden's new pitch to the voters. All right, Congressman, some think that the president is looking for an infrastructure for immigration trade. So we'll give you infrastructure. you got to give us some, some stuff on immigration enforcement. But a new poll reveals that the percentage of Democrats who see the border as a crisis jumped 17 points since January amid the spike in migrant families. So if Democrat voters are coming to this conclusion, finally, that this is a real emergency, why would the president have to negotiate here? Well, you know, maybe the infrastructure is the wall. And again, people get that we need to secure the border. People, Republicans and Democrats agree we ought to secure the border. You know, how exactly do you do it? They recognize you're going to have to have some physical barriers. Most of I mean, I'm not talking about Washington yeah. Democrats. I'm talking about people when you go out into the mainland of this country, they want a secure border and they know the crime that's coming across. They know the drugs that are being brought across. They see this caravan and the caravans. Washington might, yeah, the multiple caravans with, you know, all of the, the problems that it's bringing uh, and all these interior problems, catch and release, the lunacy of this. But for infrastructure that, is now yeah. broadband. How did, how did 5G become infrastructure? We thought it was like shovel ready. All right, we got it. One more thing. We got to mention Bernie Sanders. You mentioned moments ago that he's tripling down on this fight to restore the rights of felons to vote, but it doesn't just go there. Let's watch. At a time when the Republican Party and Donald Trump are working overtime to suppress the vote, to make it harder for people of color, we have got to make it clear, in my view, that if you are an American citizen, even if you do something terrible, we cannot take away your right to vote, whether you're in jail or whether you left jail. Clearly, what Republicans are doing is trying to deny people of color the right to vote. That's it. Death row inmates for Bernie. That's the most offensive thing, and nobody's trying to take away. And President Trump, of all people, he's been celebrating the fact that African-American unemployment is at the lowest in the history yeah, of the country. Yeah, he wants to turn out to vote. And Bernie won't celebrate that. Uh, but then he wants to give felons uh, in, in prison the right to vote while they're in prison. We're for everybody being able to vote one time in each election. And they're having problems with those kind of laws that make sure that you have the integrity of the vote for everybody. Uh, protect everybody's right to vote, except felons. If you're in federal prison... You shouldn't be voting. Do you know Biden at all? I mean, do you know him? Yeah, I've met him a, a number of times. Do you think he's missed a f he's missing a he's dropping words a lot? Do you know I mean, he seems to, he doesn't seem like the old judge. He seems to like a little few steps go. Look, if you had to compete in this field of socialists, uh, it, it's it's a different world out there than when he started in politics. Yeah, that's for sure. Congressman, thank you so much. Always great, great to being with see you, Laura. You, as always. All right.